French Revolution. Even some of Nostradamus' severest critics say that his predictions concerning the French Revolution are so astonishingly accurate as if he had been magically transported into the midst of those events as they unfolded more than two centuries before they actually happened. Here's something that can hardly be dismissed as a coincidence. By night will come through the forest of Rennes two partners by a long way round. The Queen, the White Stone, the Monk King dressed in grey at Varenne, the elected Capet causes storm, fire and the bloody slicing. Quatrain 9, Q20. The only remarkable event that ever occurred in the French village of Varennes was the arrival of King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette in the middle of the night in 1791. The royal family was on the run, trying to escape the revolutionaries who were after their heads during the French Revolution. Historians say their escape route was through the forest of Rennes, during which they got lost, roundabout way. The queen was dressed in white, her favorite color. Also, her hair was said to have turned white overnight during the desperate escape. The king also wore a simple gray suit. Louis XVI was the first elected king, or capé, and it was his arrogant rule that led to the revolution and the storm and fire that accompanied it. The bloody slicing reference can only mean one thing, the guillotine that removed their heads in 1793. This is a really fascinating quatrain with facts and places. Napoleon Bonaparte. An emperor will be born near Italy who will cost the empire very dear. When they see the people who ally with him, they will say he is less a prince than a butcher. Nostradamus had a lot to say about the first Antichrist who would be born in 1769, 203 years after the seer's death. Napoleon Bonaparte was born in Corsica, which is near Italy. His lust for ultimate power did indeed cost the empire dearly and history judges him as a butcher on a mass scale for the countless numbers killed in his wars of conquest. From the city, the shaven head will take the seat of government to chase the sordid one who will turn against him. For 14 years he will hold the tyranny. Nostradamus also plants a powerful clue that Napoleon will be the first Antichrist in C1 Q76. This man will be called by a barbaric name that the three sisters will receive from destiny. He will speak then to a great people in words and deeds. More than any other, he will have fame and glory. Nostradamus researchers insist that this quatrain must refer to Napoleon. One reason they give is that the Greek origin of his name, Neapolon, translates destroyer. Of the three antichrists, Napoleon was described as the most obsessed with deeds of glory and immortal fame. More books have been written about Napoleon than any other tyrant except perhaps for the infamous 20th century German warlord, the second antichrist that Nostradamus mentioned. He meant, of course, Adolf Hitler. Napoleon shaved his head to more closely resemble his hero, Julius Caesar. 
In 1793, he retook the marine city of Toulon from the British, and Nostradamus' prediction that the tyrant would reign for 14 years is precisely on the mark. Napoleon held power from November 1799 to April 1814. The rise and fall of the British Empire. One place that interested him greatly was England because of its close links over the centuries with his native France as either friend or foe. That's why, say his interpreters, so many of his predictions about England are so eerily on the mark. For example, Nostradamus peered 122 years into the future and made this remarkable prediction. 30 Londoners will secretly conspire against their king the enterprise on the sea. He and his followers will not like death. A fair king elected a native of Friesland, Friesen. Nostradamus researchers are convinced this quatrain points out what became known as the glorious revolution of 1688 in Great Britain. The Dutch ruler, William III of Holland, Friesland, demanded that English nobles swear their loyalty to him some nobles went to Holland to conspire with William. Others, those who will not like death, decided to escape rather than fight it out. What makes this prophecy so interesting is that there was no possibility of a Dutch candidate for the English throne while Nostradamus was alive. When Nostradamus peered into the 20th century, the most extraordinary period in human history, it was as though he were looking through a clear window into the future. People will travel safely through the sky and over land and seas. Before long, everything will be controlled. We await a very evil century. The state of the mast and the solitary people greatly changed. Few will find that they wish to retain their rank. Many things that appeared to Nostradamus in his midnight revelations were two world wars, the second and perhaps the third Antichrist, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, the rise and fall of communism, nuclear energy, a deadly new plague, and the dawn of a magnificent space adventure that may ultimately carry mankind to our final destiny, which Nostradamus says awaits us among the stars thousands of years into the future. For Nostradamus, the 20th century was both a frightful time, the evil century, and an inspiring era of magnificent achievements. The puzzling things he witnessed from the past must have filled him with terrible anxiety an overwhelming amazement at what was to come. And all that has come to pass, so far. He will drag the Great One in a cage of iron when the child of Germany observes no law. One of the remarkable series of quatrains which mentions a German called Hister, there can be little doubt that Hitler is referred to. Until Hitler seized power in 1933, 
Most scholars assume that Nostradamus Hister stood for the river Danube, which is also called Ister and its Latin name Hifter. But now it is clear that Nostradamus had a real person in mind. He may have deliberately disguised the name as he was prone to do so often in the centuries. Hitler, this child of Germany's plan to conquer Europe, depended on the German army's ability to bridge the major river on the continent in the Blitzkrieg attack that involved a rapidly moving battlefront. Hifta is probably Nostradamus' most famous secret name, encapsulating Linz and name of Adolf Hitler in one word. Hifta is the Latin name for the river Danube, near whose shores Hitler grew up in Austria. In the original manuscript of the centuries, Nostradamus has the S written in the old Gothic form of F, implying a spelling clue to make the anagram resemble the German dictator's name more closely. Hister, Hifter, Hitler. For example, he clearly foresaw the horror of World War II, undoubtedly the defining event of the 20th century. And just as he predicted, the war was launched by the history's second Antichrist, Adolf Hitler. Nostradamus was just as specific about Hitler as an antichrist as he was about Napoleon. Until the 20th century, Nostradamus researchers were unsure of what he meant regarding his prediction about the rise of the cross of iron topsy-turvy. Then, in the mid-1930s, the meaning suddenly became startlingly clear as the shadow of the swastika, the cross topsy-turvy, fell across Europe. As he did with Napoleon, Nostradamus provides several Hister Hitler quatrains about the destruction he caused in his attempt to dominate the world. Some of these quatrains were so incredibly extraordinarily accurate in detail that Hitler himself and his deputy, Joseph Goebbels, often twisted Nostradamus' words for their own propaganda purposes. They attempted to justify to the world that the Third Reich was destined to rule the world because it was foretold by the seer. One historian even claims that Hitler set the date for his invasion of Poland based on what turned out to be a faulty reading of the quatrains. The quatrain that no historian can ignore comes interpreting Nostradamus' vision of Hitler is C2Q2 in which he warned Beasts wild with hunger will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hister.
The great man will be struck down in daytime by a thunderbolt, an evil deed foretold by a bearer of petition. President Kennedy was indeed struck down in broad daylight when viewing the event from his distant perspective in the past to Nostradamus it must have seemed that the blow came from a thunderbolt out of the sky rather than a rifle bullet from the upper floor of a building. The royal family. She who was cast out will return to reign, her enemies found among conspirators. More than ever will her reign be triumphant. At three and seventy death is very sure. C6Q59. Among the royal family, Princess Di became virtually an outcast when she and Charles split. Their separation, their spats and the embarrassing public accusations about extramarital affairs were rife with conspirators in both camps. But since she was the mother of a future King of England, Diana couldn't be banished from the royal scene entirely, and in fact she wasn't. The outpouring of anguish that accompanied her tragic death in a traffic accident on August 31, 1997 proved that she will always reign triumphant in the eyes of millions of people around the world. She died in her 37th year. Here the seer used just a simple twist of numbers.